So now we will know which part of the plant and which parts of the animals are sources of food. So plant parts and animal products as food. So we know that plants are the sources of food. But which part of the plant? Do we eat the whole plant? No, right? So which part of the plant? So some stuff in a specific plant. Either one part may be edible or two or more parts may be edible. Edible means ready to eat. That means we can eat it. Edible and non-edible. There are two things. Edible and non-edible. Edible means suitable for food purpose. Non-edible means not suitable for food or eating. So some plants have two or more edible parts. So example banana plant. Banana we consume the ripe banana as fruit. Raw banana as vegetable curry. Then banana flower is also used for cooking purposes. Then on the banana leaf we eat food. So that is the way banana is useful in many ways. Then mustard plant. Mustard plant also we use mustard seeds. It's called rye seeds in Hindi. Then mustard flower is also used. Then oil is also extracted from mustard plant. That way these two plants are helpful in more than two or three ways. So, we eat the leafy vegetables, right? Those are the leaf part of the plant. Then, we eat the fruit part of the plant, like tomato, cucumber, bottle gourd. What is bottle gourd? Kandu. Or you can call it Loki. Hindi. Then, we eat the root part of the plants also. For example, potato, carrot, ginger. All these grow in the root part of the plant. Potato, carrot and ginger. Then the seed parts, the seed parts of the plant are also very helpful. All the edible oils, that means oils which we use for cooking purpose, oils which we use for making chutneys, pickles, for all those purposes the seed part will be used. What oils we use? Groundnut seed oil, soya bean seed oil we use, mustard seed oil we use, we use sunflower oil that is extracted from flower part only. So these oils are extracted from the seed part. So this is how plants help in acting as food. So for example, we will take one plant part example that is sprouted seed and one animal product example honey and how those act as food. So coming to sprouted seeds, you know sprouts nowadays they are available in the supermarkets, even sprouts are being made at home by your mothers because sprouts is a healthy diet, free of fat, free of cholesterol and sprouts help you in being healthy. So, sprouted seeds. How do you prepare a sprouted seed? What is the method of preparation of sprouted seed? So, to prepare sprouted seed, take a dry seed of chana dal, moon dal or groundnut. You know chana dal, no yellow colored gram. Moon dal is green gram, then groundnut. So, any of these seeds you take, a handful of seeds. Then what you do? Put a small quantity of seeds, that means a small quantity, a handful of seeds in a glass of water. That means soak the seeds in a glass of water overnight. That means whole night you leave it like that. Then what you do next day, drain the water. That means throw away the water by keeping your hand without so that the seeds don't go away. So next day, drain the water and leave the seeds in the glass. So only water you have to throw after soaking it for one whole night. Then you have to retain the seeds. Then what you do? Wrap them in a wet cloth. Take a wet cloth, cotton cloth and wrap these wet seeds. And keep it aside for one day. Then what you observe? Next day you will observe small whitish growths on these seeds. So these seeds are known, these growths are known as sprouts. Suppose if in one day you do not observe that growth, you wet the seeds again, wet the cloth again and keep it like that for one more day. Then also you will observe sprouts. So these sprouts can be either eaten raw or boiled or can be mixed with spices or it can be mixed with any sweet corns or also like that. So now you have understood the method of making sprouts. You take a glass of water in that you put some dry seeds of any dal or groundnuts. Then you soak it in a glass of water for one whole night. Then you throw away the water and retain the seeds. Then that seeds you wrap it in a wet cloth for one day and keep it aside. Next day you see whitish growths on those seeds. Those are known as sprouts. And sprouts are the source of sprouts. Where do they come from? The source of sprouts are the seeds is plant. Plant part. Seed is a part, plant part, right? Now 
moving on to honey. What is the source of honey? Definitely animal. Which animal? Honey bee. Everybody knows honey bees, right? On the trees, on the apartment walls, on many neem trees or many trees. We see big, big brownish colored structures, irregularly shaped, where honey bees will be residing. So those are those are known as bee hive. The place where honey bee lives is a bee hive, and honey bees are dangerous always. Suppose if you throw a stone onto the bee hive, the honey bees will immediately come back and attack you straight away. So you should never throw a stone on a honey bee or attack the honey bees or try to harm or hurt the honey bees. So the source of honey is bees. That is honey bee. So how do bees make the honey? Those honey bees collect the nectar from flowers. So yeah, as we all have a general idea that honey bees collect the honey from the flowers. So that when they collect from the flowers, the honey is known as nectar. Then they convert it into honey and store it in their hive. The hive will have a rectangular shaped small small openings or chambers in which the honey bees store the honey. So they collect nectar from the flowers, convert it into honey and store it. But those flowers are not available all through the year because we know every flower grows in a particular season. So but then in that year, in that part of the year where the flowers come, they work hard day and night, they collect the nectar and store it for all through the year. Flowers and their nectar is only available in a part of a year and only a few months. Then they store the nectar for use all through the year. So these bees store the nectar all through the years. So we have seen in the Jungle Book movie, right? The bear, the Mowgli were hunting for the honey bee hives. And those honey bee hives, the bear used to store it for year long and the bears used to eat the honey, right? So bee hive is collected, squeezed, honey is extracted. So if you, if you want to extract honey, especially some people are there, professionals who will climb up the trees with some protective layer like oil I think they'll apply onto their body so that the bees don't bite them and then they go up the tree pull out the honey bee they kill all the honey bees they bring the hive down they squeeze it and extract the honey some villager people drink that honey directly but otherwise the honey is purified with the help of machines and then it is available in the supermarkets so this is how honey is an animal product which acts as a food Animals are the sources of food. So now we will be learning what do animals eat. For example, buffalo it gives us milk. Buffalo, what does it eat? Grass, that means green grass on the ground. Then hay. Hay is dry grass. Then grains, food grains, and oil cakes. What is oil cake? Oil cake is nothing but suppose from groundnut seed, from mustard seed, from soybean seed. After the oil is extracted. The remaining waste part is known as oil cakes, which is very nutritious for the animals. So that is why oil cakes is fed as a food for food or fodder for animals. Same way coming to cat. What does cat eat? Cat eats small animals like rats, as we see in Tom and Jerry. Then cat eats birds. Then cats also drink lots of milk. Then rat. Rat eats small animals. Lions come in the category of wild animals. They eat the other animals. Then crow. Crow is a bird. Crow eats insects and food grains. So, depending on the things what they eat, animals are classified into three types. Herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. What are herbivores? Herbivores are animals that, that eat only plants. Herbivores are animals that eat only plants. The examples of such animals are goat, sheep and cattle. Here cattle means goat, cow, buffalo etc so herbivores are animals that eat only plants and the examples of animals are goat sheep and cattle then moving on to carnivores carnivores are those animals which eat the other animals so carnivores are animals which depend on their food for other animals which depend on other animals for their food examples are lion tiger leopard and crocodile even crocodile comes out of the water for the purpose of food and whichever animals come to drink water to the rivers crocodile pounces on those animals and eat the eat that 
and eats that animal. So lion, tiger, leopard, crocodile, all these are all these are wild animals, and they feed on other animals. Then moving on to om omnivore. Omnivores are animals which eat both plants and animals. So examples of those are dog, pig, deer, squirrel, rat, human beings, and chimpanzees. They eat both on plants and animals. So herbivores eat only plants. Carnivores eat both. Carnivores eat only animals. Then omnivores eat both plants and animals. So there are different examples for three categories of animals. So as we know that the population in the world is day by day increasing, so the food should be available for the whole people of the country. So increasing population is leading to the increasing demand of the food. So as the population is increasing, the number of people are increasing. So thereby a lot of requirement for the food is increasing. So what can we do? We have to find way to ensure that there is no food scarcity, there is no food shortage. See that as an individual, see that there is no food shortage around you and make sure that everybody gets food. That means food is available to each and everyone on the earth. That should be our motive or goal. So this is about the chapter food and where does it come from.